power of the Acholi, Lawirodi, Rod, David, Onen, Achana, Mario, the Honorable Minister of Energy and Mineral Development, the Honorable Members of Parliament, and also Honorable Members of Parliament Emeritus, including the two former leaders of opposition in Parliament, Right Honorable uh, Professor Ogen Latigo and Right Honorable uh, Betty Aol. The Resident District Commissioners, the LC5 chairpersons, the religious leaders here, those I've seen and those I've not seen, I've seen Sheikh uh, Khalil, the members of the the, the different district security uh, committees led by their resident district commissioners, the other cultural leaders that I have uh, not seen, but I'm told they are in the house. The le the LC5 chairpersons and all your councillors uh, who have come for this uh, function. The, I don't want to forget, because uh, the Honorable uh, Nyamutoro, who has come with our minister, because I'll be the same minister who may forget you. Uh, Nyamutoro, I was told, the lower version of uh, Walur, which means Labe. Come here, go. Yes. Omurunji. The different civil society organizations and the members of the media. If there's any that I've not mentioned, may I stand on the protocol already established by the uh, the MC. And of course, all of you, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. City. Honorable Minister, your team, and all the stakeholders, both political and technical, I want to welcome all of you uh, to this uh, marvelous city of Gulu and in this very important uh, meeting. I also want to begin by thanking God uh, that uh, guided the president to give me an opportunity. <laughs> to continue serving my country in the capacity of the Minister of State for Northern Uganda. Honorable <laughs> Minister, I want to welcome you to Northern Uganda, the land of plains, valleys, hills, rivers, variety of foods, and happy people. Actually, this region is estimated to be about 28,278 28, square kilometers in land area, and about, which is about 11% of the land area of Uganda, with a population of about 2.2 million uh, people, which is just about 6% of the national population. I want to thank you, Honorable Minister, for convening this conference and this meeting, which is the stakeholders' engagement <coughs> on energy, oil and gas, energy, oil and gas, minerals in the Acholi sub-region. I really want to thank you for organizing such an event because it is in dialogue, it is in dialogue where discoveries are made and great innovations and the wilderness uh, is discovered. Honorable Minister, I've been made aware that Uganda has close to 27 mineral types in commercially viable quantities. I don't know whether this data was true. 
Oh, 57 now. So I need to update my list. So the wealth of Uganda is big. So this includes iron, gold, copper, cobalt, uranium, marble, limestone, phosphates, graphite, to mention but a few. Not forgetting, of course, the oil and gas and the rare earth. In 2022 23, the mining industry contributed to 2.2%, contributed 2.2% to the national uh, GDP according to UPOS data of, 20, uh, of 21st December 2023. Now, if you compare this to other sectors in the economy, compared to other sectors like agriculture, that contributed 24%, the services sector contributing 42.6%, and then the industry, which contributed 41.6%. We see that much as we are the, 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 the country is wealthy, endowed with the main resources, its contribution to the national economy is still small. Now, this is also important for all of us to get to know, so that as we look for jobs, we look for opportunities to create jobs and make money, this data should also guide us. So as we, guide, as we gather here to talk about this sector, energy, uh, minerals, which is both metal and non-metal, we should also be cognizant that there are also other sectors in the economy that should be attracted, attracted uh, to us, uh, just like I've mentioned. And they look at agriculture, the services sector, the industry. They should inform us and also inform our population, especially when you talk about uh, creation, or looking for creation wealth, and also uh, jobs. But of course, it also challenges us that might have had these volumes of deposits of minerals, both metal and non-metal. We are we still exploiting very little of it, and it's still cont contributing uh, this money uh, to our economy. Uh, Honorable Minister, like you have said, in terms of uh, land, and also good people, and among other things, the output of this region is still this small compared to its potential. This region, like I said earlier, is also rich in other things like crops, cash crops, food, food and cash crops, livestock, fish, forestry, other minerals as you may know, biomass and tourism among others. So the, the potential of this region is great. What you and me and others should not do is how to exploit this potential and harness what God has given us here to make us great contributors to the economy of Uganda. So this requires harnessing these potentials to boost development and from transformation of the people and the region. Honourable Minister and uh, guests here invited, you may wish to know that despite this great potential that we are we are talking about, Rosary, this region is still among the poorest in Uganda. In fact, the data which I have shows that actually the region is the poorest in Uganda now. Your poverty, you and me, stand at a whooping 67%, and you are followed by Karamoja. So you have outcompeted Karamoja in holding the first number in the poverty. So as we sit here, all of us leaders in our varying capacities and calibers we should be cognizant that we are talking about very rich region but poor. In fact, we are like the cells in the body of somebody who is diabetic. High sugar level in the body, but appreciating or consuming very little of it. So, this should inform our energies, should inform our strategies every time we have discussions on uh, what uh, to do.
There is therefore need for all of us, all of us, each of us, to think about the need to focus our strategies as we talk about this region. Both governments and all the key players so that we can achieve the much desired transformation uh, that we want. This will require addressing the question of both food and income security through investments that will boost income and narrow the poverty gap between this region and the rest of the country. All of us should be responsible and take responsibility for the status of this region. You come from here, you come from elsewhere, as long as you are a Ugandan, we must all we must all play our roles in the improvement of the status of this region. We have just had in the in the anthem of East Africa, when it says in Swahili that to find a cousin of Makini, Kujenga Bora, Kujenga Africa Mashaiki Mashariki Bora. That all of us we must do our work within the deal with the commitment to build a great region. So time will come, we'll get back to you. And we want we want put in each of us, we want put in each of our faces our responsibilities. And we want to ask all of us, want us want to ask ourselves questions. Why this region has remained like this? We in government are beginning to ask ourselves what have we done? What are we doing? And what can we do better? Or how can we do it better to improve this situation? And you also, my good people, leaders of different, uh, in the different capacities, capacities, the cultural leaders, the political leaders, and the citizens. We will also begin to ask yourself what we are doing, but beginning to ask yourself what you, as an individual, as a leader, or a citizen, is doing. So that collectively we can find a lasting solution in the transformation of this country and, and improving our contribution to the economy of Uganda. Because with this figure, who are we or what is our role? Or what's our contribution in the economy of Uganda? Are we participants? Are we observers? Are we bystanders? So what are we or what is our contribution to the economy of Uganda? And yet we demand the services. We demand the services of the government and any other parts of the country. Ideally, any citizen above the age of 18 should be able to create wealth either through being employed or by employing the factors that are necessary for wealth creation. You should be able to pay tax, but you cannot pay tax if you are not earning. And you should be able to vote. And vote what you think will help you transform you and your country. So kila mutu, kila mutu kwa wakati yake, afanyi kazi yake kwa makini. So this region therefore require sustained economic growth, actually of about 10% per annum, to catch up with the, the average growth of other parts of the country. This requires investments in infrastructure, skills, access to finance, entrepreneurship, technologies, and strong engagement with the private sector and the positive mindset development. Honorable Minister, I don't know the deep in detail the mineral potential of this region. I don't want to drink tonight, but I hear that there are minerals in this region. But what I know for sure is that there is oil 
individual. Because one of the oil wells you have is in this region in Asia, I think, of Noya, in the park. I don't know whether it's just gas also, but I know about the oil. I know that oil is there. Other minerals, I don't know. But I also know that there are, there are deposits of minerals uh, in this region. Whose quantities and variations, I don't know. We have recently heard voices in this region raising matters of lack of transparency, accountability, as far as the exploitation of the mineral wealth in this region is concerned, among other activities. This is what we have been hearing. And this kind of meeting is very good, so that facts are placed on the table, a conversation is held, so that there is harmony in society. Things we hear, or oh, rumors, rumors have potential of inciting the public. Rumors have also potential of scaring you. For those who read the Bible, you read about a man called Prophet Elijah. Elijah had the perception that he was the next to be killed, that he was the only prophet remaining in the land of Israel. And that it was not the case. Even with the consolation and counseling from God himself, that Elijah, there are also others of their type, whom we have kept in the caves in groups, and they are there. El fear made Elijah not even to believe God. Elijah developed extreme fear that he ended up being taken to heaven alive. I think he only I think he's the only, the only man who has been taken to heaven alive. <coughs> Perception can cause this. So I hope this meeting in this small room will ease the tension, will ease the tension and the perception about uh, this sector in this region. Honorable Minister, reflecting our past and the progress already made in this region and also in this sector. Government, I'm aware, put in place a mineral policy aimed at stimulating and guiding the participation of the private sector and other players in this industry of the oil, the gas, the minerals. For the success of the, this policy implementation, there is need, like you have done, to continue inviting all the necessary stakeholders such as the district authorities, security, people in the private sector like the miners and miners associations like the Lord Mayor has mentioned here, the civil society organizations, traditional leaders and institutions to participate in such conversation. With the government's strong policy on minerals now, that does not encourage exportation, ex exportation exports or raw minerals. There's always hope that this that God has given us can be exploited to improve the livelihood of the people. Uganda does not allow now export of raw materials, meaning these minerals of whatever kind, metal or non-metal, when exploited, are able to provide jobs and opportunities uh, for our people. And of course, jobs and those opportunities, they are not going to say that there are minerals in Wulu uh, City. Uh, there are minerals in Made. Uh, now, since you come from this area, there's a job for you here and, and the opportunities. No. Opportunities also get those who are prepared and ready for them. Can it teach any of you any? Teach any of your it will not find you redundant, and that is the source that will benefit you. You will only have the opportunity of talking about them, and you will only benefit from other services that go, that government offers to any citizens of Uganda that also have the right over the mineral resources that on which you see 
if you are not ready to take advantage of those opportunities. So to end for you, especially our young people, in the growing industry, in this growing industry, mining industry, there is need to deliberately skill the people through the skilling programs to provide labor for the mineral in this uh, in this industry, in the exploitation and processing and value uh, to this resources. Honorable Minister, I hope you will also tell the people in this region that other than these minerals, but also the activities attracted by these minerals, the other opportunities. For instance, provision of other services. They may need drivers, they may, they may need mechanics, they may need uh, technicians, they may need other service providers, or they may need other suppliers. If they say that, okay, if it is true, that is a lot of minerals in the Jolie now. The world is going to descend the Jolie here to make minerals. And they wanted to, to supply food, quality food, vegetables, tomatoes, onions, Irish potatoes, among others. Are you ready to take advantage of this? So these are things, right, uh, Honorable Minister, that I also want to be very bold and tell our people that opportunities exist. But taking opportunities are those who are prepared for them. This is what the world is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this kind of regional engagements with the leaders and all the stakeholders is very important to ensure inclusive development of the region's natural resources, identifying the challenges and gaps, and finding solutions and forging partnerships to ensure transparency and sustainable development. It my sincere hope that the conversation in this room will take place with a lot of calm and friendliness. No tensions. You have a conversation with the government. The government of NRM, the government of the people, there should be no worries at all. I repeat, there should be no worries at all among this youth when you have a conversation with the government of NRM because we are a government of the people. So I hope that this meeting will discuss uh, pertinent issues in this industry, the oil, gas, and minerals. And then how the local people also can prepare themselves to take advantage in this industry, whether here in Ajuli or elsewhere in Uganda. Honorable Minister, I want to wind up by saying, let's be inside, let's be inspired by the oneness of man. With this. I want to thank all of you for listening to me.